everyone, and welcome to a Time Shifters podcast, Time Hop Edition. This is Christopher here with Tom, as always. Tom, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. We watched a film from 2023 called Beware the Boogeyman. In this independent anthology film, produced by 7th Street Productions, a new doctor arrives at Silverdale Psychiatric Hospital to begin her new job. She sits down with Dr. Moon, who explains some of the hospital's more unique and yet related cases. Five patients who all have experiences with what they call the boogeyman. Now, of course, you and I have said it before. We've, we've reviewed films in the past. We like an anthology series, a, a film. No, absolutely. It is always interesting to see you know, these short stories and how they are threaded together. I honestly thought the um, the threading storyline for this actually worked pretty well. I liked the idea. No, I I, I like the idea. Execution has some work. <laughs> yeah, possibly. The premise here is you know they each were looking at uh, these individuals' files and the, you know they were discussing these the cases and then we would see mm-hmm. uh, the events that happened prior to them arriving at the hospital. So I thought. Just that as it was better than just a um, someone that just seemed completely disconnected to them, right? You know, telling stories, and then you see a story, which we've we've seen in the past as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this one I thought was a pretty clever idea to in order to weave everything together. Shall we get to the butts of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, butts. The individual stories themselves are a bit of a mixed bag, even within the individual stories. They're all written and directed by different people. And, and you can tell. Uh, they, they have different looks, different feels, different modality of getting it done. Mm-hmm. I will say that I believe all the directors were really good at occasionally framing some really great shots. Sure. There's a lot of visual moments in this film where it's like, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's the, it's maybe a tired trope now, but the whole glance in a mirror and there's something there and then you look and nothing's there. Right. Uh, but this one, they played with that a little bit and it, it I thought it, it worked well. There's one or two where if you really weren't paying attention, you wouldn't catch it. Right. And you're wondering why the music sting. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um. And again, there was some really great uh, shots with just lighting and maybe an overuse of the smoke machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, 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 that was one of the things I was going to comment on. Uh, where where is everybody living? That, <laughs> that there's that much fog outside there that that's moving. <laughs> Or inside the house. I mean, the very first story, they they go into this old house and there are light beams everywhere oh, yeah. because there's a, a haze in the in the room. Like, should you check for fire or <laughs> <laughs> dust is really thick in here? <laughs> yeah. No, uh, it has a lot of that. Uh, it is interesting, though, when you watch something. These are clearly five short stories, six if you count the overarching one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was a little impressed, and it must have been kind of hard for uh, some of the directors and such, because you had to have the same boogeyman every single time, ha- and... I don't know if there was some overall direction in that they had to kind of use them the exact same way each time, which is what uh, unfortunately kind of worked against the the five individual ones because because this was an element that you were going to have to incorporate no matter what with this particular version of that particular boogeyman, no matter what, um, they started... Feeling like despite the extra, the direction and, and the different kind of storyline, they were all the same thing. <laughs> yeah, they they did have a sort of a, a feeling of a, a wash, rinse, repeat. Um, exactly. 
when it came to the boogeyman, okay, he's going to come out of the closet. He's going to sneak up behind somebody. Uh, yeah, you're going to get That's going to happen. You're going to get that. And the reason, reason, as much as there is any reason to be visited by the boogeyman, is you yourself are not probably the most model human being. So <laughs> this is why he's there. And some of your torture might be just wiping out somebody else before he gets to you. <laughs> At least it was an attempt to create a common thread mm -hmm. throughout the stories where we've seen some in the past where it's obvious that it's just five, you know, four or five unrelated stories. And then someone shoehorned them all together <laughs> yeah. with just some narration. And, and in this, and in this universe, and I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. So this at least could have worked. It could have. The short stories also kind of suffered from, uh, they they were a little too long, <laughs> each of them. There were a few that felt like they were dragging quite a bit. Yeah, and, and like, and, and when you after you've seen the first two, you know where the rest of them are all going. So, and I actually found myself audibly going, saying, "Oh crap, there's three more to go." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you could have trimmed this down by a story or two. It, you get that to the point where you're just like. Okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, like, well, and, and I realize, and, and he, because they've chosen the psychiatric route, uh, and these two doctors trying to pull pull a thread through their common psych, psycho, psychological reaction to the the events, um, and the fact that she believes they're all delusional, but they are having a shared delusion. And I understand the medical interest in maybe following that, which is why you needed it to have at least five, because if you said two or three, that's more coincidental than five or more. Right. Yeah. So for this version of the story, you were going to have to do the five, but that made it so long. <laughs> it did. It did. I didn't actually see the actual uh, entire run count. I just know that when I, my wife was half watching with me and we got to a certain point and I, I, I paused it and I'm like, oh, I've, you know, I've got 40 minutes to go. And I felt like I'd already watched this film for like an hour and a half or something at that point. And she, and that's where she tapped out. She's like, you do, I don't. And she went, <laughs> and she went to bed. And I was a little surprised when I hit that pause and saw I had, I thought I was, oh, this must be the last story, you know, 10, 20 minutes and I'm out. No, no, I've got over 40 minutes left. I'm like, what are they going to do? <laughs> no, it, exactly. And, and, and what's mystifying at this is I've pulled up the, uh, the count. It, it's just shy of one hour, 50 minutes. Okay, so it is almost two hours. It is almost two hours, but it does have a way to make that feel longer. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and then the disappointing part, uh, again, the story, the individual short stories had lots of potential. There was some interesting uh, points uh, in and of themselves could have been their own tale unto themselves. The part I was disappointed with when you do one of these, these anthology pieces we have that overarching, the psychiatry one, and that in and of itself was interesting other than the fact that the, the two actresses and their delivery kind of was flat and kind of weird. Um, but by the time we get to the end and we decide to loop the boogeyman into their story, this is the one where I need more. I need to know how we got her to have a boogeyman encounter uh, and they rushed that one. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, it would have been a little bit more satisfying to me to see all these and not have that element weaved into the overall arching story. You know, the the, the thread storyline. I think it would have been great with her, like a final line going, "I think I'm gonna really find this job interesting." And you know, the door shuts, and that's the end of the film. I think that would have been. And that, that, what's that funny is they had that scene 
And, and it did go dark, and then we went into everything else that was about to happen. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I didn't need that part, uh, so I completely agree with you. It would have been kind of cool to just mm -hmm. have this be the bridge to... Basically, it's a film of short films. Let it be that, and let it have this overarching thing, which adds a little creepy factor and a little bit of, did what you just learn actually happen, or is it really a psychological thing? So... You had potential, and then you ruined it. <laughs> yeah, and and if you had the, the I think this is going to be very fascinating, and that's the end of the film, that gives that sort of idea and hint that there's more to tell. Mm -hmm. There's more stories that could be told in this hospital. Se sequels, folks. Sequels. <laughs> yeah, you got to think of the sequel. Uh, some of the individual stories, again, as I was saying, mixed bag. Yeah. Um, a few of them, the acting, a few of them acting on the whole, not that great. A few of them had a couple standouts. Actually, I think the last story about the, uh, the quote unquote recovering drug user living with his mom. Yeah. I thought he was great. I really liked him. Yeah. And I liked that story. And I liked how that one was written. There were some really great moments in that one uh, uh, towards the end when he's being questioned by the police. And you're like, so th did this happen before or after you smoked crack and drank hand sanitizer? <laughs> after? <laughs> yeah, no, that one ha had a little more humor and a little more uh, like, I could see this happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would have loved to have seen kind of that theme or that style of storytelling in the other stories. Right. And, and, well, and it's interesting you bring up that one too, because that's the one where, okay, the guy, the, the young man himself ha has a little bit of checkered history and obviously drug use, but we're not aware of him being bad. And, right. and Despite his frustrations with his mother, he's actually doing everything that he says he did, other than lying about the drug use part. But uh, but he makes his curfew. He's doing the things that she's asking. She's yelling at him, and for a reason. But but yeah, like I didn't see a reason why all of a sudden the boogeyman had to come and torture him. <laughs> right, and his poor mom. And his poor mom. Yeah. You know when you're dealing with. Actors that end up in these independent films, mm. you know, you're you're looking at, um, I don't want to say necessarily amateur actors, but you know, these aren't Hollywood actors. No. These no, no, no. maybe some may or may not have actually taken acting classes or have gone to school or you know all that stuff. You need a strong director. You do. There are so many moments where. You know, a scene takes place or someone gives a line where you needed a director to go, can we try that one more time? Could you maybe do this this time? Could you not look and do the over-exaggerated, oh, darn, <laughs> kind of thing? Could you look like you're not acting? <laughs> yeah, because uh, that now harkens me back to also just drop gratuitous stuff for the sake of it uh the the one where we were dealing with the uh the young woman painter uh who has isolated herself in this home um and and we had to have a topless scene for the shower for no it, there was no gain there was no reason to do it and like and on top of it this was an actress that probably could have used little tender and tenderness and care from the director because she could have rerun some lines a couple of times nope absolutely i think that was exactly the one i was thinking of where i was like she needs a stronger director mm -hmm. to guide her yeah because uh i it's hard to believe but there is uh there is some technique to having a an on-screen phone call <laughs> and to it's interesting how even in different films it was treated differently. Like I, one of the things I caught out of the gate was at the beginning of the movie when the uh, the the new doctor is going to the uh, the facility. 
she's having a phone call at the time and they opted to not have the other side of the call because she's talking to her husband. Um, and I thought that was interesting. So I thought it was weird when we got to one of the short stories and now we're having the conversation and you're hearing both sides. I'm like, okay, so that that indicated the definite differences in directing and, and all. Yeah. But yeah, she yeah, and- she couldn't hold a conversation that sounded remarkable at, at all believable and she was acting against somebody else. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. The first call it would make more sense to hear the other half because sure. she was driving, so you think, oh, shouldn't she be hands free? Mm-hmm. <laughs> The other one, we hear the call, and she's holding a phone up to her ear. Right. <laughs> she's not on speakerphone or anything. Uh, I found the actual delivery of the woman that was supposedly on the other end of the call, that's a woman with a paper in her hand reading them live. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, yeah, and it had every bit that feel like it, like it could have felt like that this was the first time they were reading the dialogue. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, need, needs more finesse. Yeah, just just a little bit. They maybe you could write it off that it was supposed to be your grandmother, so maybe that's just the way she's talked. An older woman, who, who knows? Sure, but well, yeah, but I mean, the actress that we're watching having the conversation mm-hmm. was a bit wooden through that conversation as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She could have easily have been reading the lines. <laughs> You know, off a cue card or something, just off camera. They're literally on the face of the phone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, as I said, I think visually this film did a lot. Yeah. I just, I think a little stronger direction, a little tightening up on the story and the editing for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was even a once or twice where a line was repeated there was even a line from like the doctors. They say like an entire sentence and then the story starts and the entire sentence is repeated as narration. No, I caught, story. No, I caught <laughs> that too. And I'm like, that, for a minute there, I had to really go, did that actually just happen? Yeah. Yeah. That, that one got by him. That was a miss. I think continuity miss. And some, it's weird. Some of the positions that are involved in making a film but you can tell when they're missing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that one was just a legitimate mistake. Yep. I imagine they probably sat down at their premiere. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> the editor shrinking into his seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. If you want to go and check out Beware the Boogeyman, it's worth, I think it's worth seeing. As I said, there are some really great visual if you if you're looking for a good cinematographer maybe this one ain't a bad one to go and sure. you know uh collect some names for but yeah just need just need a little tighter around the, the edges i think yeah and when we watch these low budget independent films um the effort is everything and they put in a decent effort Effort was made. That is something I do appreciate, is effort was made for this one. Effort was made. There was potential. There were some decent, even jump scares along the way. They they did a good job with some of it. But yeah, it just needs a lot of tightening up. It was yeah. not a well-oiled yeah. machine, but it got the job done. <laughs> right. So anyway, yeah, Beware the Boogeyman. It's out there. Check your streaming services or in video on demand, and you'll be able to uh, dig this one up. It is available as we speak. That's going to do it for this time hop. We'll be back in a week with a full episode. Until then, thanks everyone for listening. Talk to you later. Bye. See you.